in a manner suggesting an undead automaton might just be able to express excitement. The Skylock chittered as it scuttled towards the laboratory, its robes brushing the dank walls that seemed far too narrow for the laboratory's owner to comfortably traverse. It burst into a chamber filled with soul cages, shelves of forbidden terms, and stone slabs atop which the many subjects of vivisection remained. The Skylock skidded to a halt when the blade of a massive axe appeared before its neck. Turning to the figure that held the axe, the Skylock started to articulate something, causing the figure at the end of the laboratory to look up from his studying. Gods below I hate thrall speak, Gorshade snarled from his desk, glaring at the Skylock. Despite having acquired the ability to understand the language of the undead ward, the Eldritch hated it nonetheless. In life his ears were accustomed to the rich nuances of sheer, and in undeath, at least a certain proportion of his acquaintances were good enough to speak using broadly intellectual languages. But they all speak. Tartarus, he barked. Bring that fool here. I haven't got the time to waste on its prattling. With some effort, the Bane Lord lowered his axe, letting a growl resonate ominously within his armour, before snapping out a fist and grabbing the Skarlock by its throat and hauling him over to the Eldritch, who stood to join Tartarus in looking down upon the towering thrall. For a few moments, the three were motionless in silence, until the beginnings of a sneer appeared on the Iosin's features. My master, the Skarlock paused, wishes, demands. It quickly corrected itself before pausing again. Your immediate presence. And your master is? Gorshade did not recognise the markings on the Skarlock's robes and other accoutrements, nor did his arcane senses discern anything about the necromancer responsible for this thrall's rise. This one serves the liches under my lord Tenebris, Lord Gorshade. Tartarus intoned slowly and steadily. Gorshade's eyes widened at the name of the lich lord. Then he snapped his gaze back to the Skarlock and regarded him warily. Does he expect a response? No! Rudeness was not necessarily an intentional facet of those who used thrall speak to communicate, but it often felt like it. Such was the state of affairs among those who were burdened with the distinct lack of wits to be able to handle the turn of phrase of an adolescent. Is he here in scale or at Drag Jokarum? If this one is here, my lord. Tartarus momentarily tightened his grip on the Skarlock. Then I believe it likely that he is at his library close to Divinitas's cathedral. Yes, the thrall just managed to nod. Thank you. Now get out of here. The Bane Lord let the Skarlock go, and the minion scrambled towards the door in an ungainly manner. Watching it leave, Gorshade hissed uncomfortably. Lord Tenebris has never deigned to summon me. He... Tartarus started. Not in that way, Tartarus. Gorshade glanced at the Bane Lord with a grim smirk, receiving a slow and even more ominous chuckle in response. After a few moments of bizarrely companionable silence, the Bane Lord hefted his axe. Perhaps he has something of value to tell you. Unlikely. I have my own goals and he has his, and he has access to resources I may not even request. Have you received orders from him lately? No, though I must return to the realms of the living soon. Asphyxius and the others will have need of more Bane forces soon. I understand. Gorshade nodded. We had better not keep your summoner waiting, then. Unfortunately, a while later and the lack of appropriate living in the vicinity was starting to tell on the Bane Lord, something Gorshade noted with no small annoyance. So they took a detour to the docks, where he knew a group of aspiring necromancers were conducting experiments on captured Signaran, Orodic, or Kedoran, or whatever, Imeri's human sailors. Presently, they arrived and indeed, a long row of gibbets was arrayed, stretching from the dockside and up a wretched promenade. Without bothering to ask permission, Gorshade hacked down one of them, the fall breaking the occupant's legs and smashed the lock off. Not needing any prompting, Tartarus wrenched the cage open, reached in and dragged the now wailing human out. It never ceased to marvel Gorshade at both what Tartarus did and how he did it. In a process that he sought to study further, the Eldritch watched as the Bane Commander plunged his gauntleted hand into the unfortunate sailor's chest and killed him. The essence of the sailor's soul started emanating from the now limp corpse, but with a word of command, Tartarus seemed to hold it fast, and with only the barest of gestures, the soul flashed, its form suddenly corrupted by the abyss between dimensions. Finally, the Bane Lord returned the twisted soul back to its former host, and none too kindly. The sailor that once was shrieked its return, transforming into the now familiar form of a skeletal warrior, ghostly and horrifying. 
while the gibbet that once housed it contorted and tore itself apart, shards of the bars slamming into the new warrior's form as armour and weapons. Seeing the fate of their fellow prisoner, the others started mewling pitifully, begging to be set free, or grew silent in resignation of their fate. Well, perhaps this diversion was not wholly unproductive, Gorshade mused to himself, watching intently as Tartarus moved from gibbet to gibbet. The gathered sorcerers down the road quickly realised their own studying appeared to be going to waste, and suddenly stopped their bickering about the minutiae of the effects on humans of the Dragonfather's blight based on proximity. One of them hurried up to remonstrate with the Eldritch. What in Torok's name? he blustered, but Gorshade just backhanded him aside. You have no place invoking his name like that, he declared loudly, unless you too wish to be the subject of Lord Tartarus's ministrations. From the ground, the necromancer nervously shook his head, not least at mention of Tartarus's name, and the Eldritch allowed him to scamper back to the safety of his peers. Nominal safety, that is. After reaving and binding a couple dozen souls or so, the Bane Lord's seething malice seemed to be sated, at least for now, and he gave a command to the assembled Bane warriors who floated away towards one of the assembly points for the Crixian undead, soon to be bound for the mainland to make mischief among those they once called a friend. The sailors that appeared to be next in line for conversion appeared unsure as to whether they should be relieved or not given that the necromancers very quickly started to express their displeasure at the apparent cancellation of their experiments. You're late, an undead priest muttered when they appeared before Lich Lord Tenebris's domain within Skell. And what business is that of yours that we are? Gorshade was suddenly irritated again. My Lord Tenebris wishes to return to his research at Dreyr Recurring and... Then perhaps he should have given that Scarlock more precise instructions. Obviously, the priest was tasked. Obviously, the priest was tasked with conveying the summons, but thought less of the Eldritch than Gorshade's usual company. Nevertheless, he noted the priest's lack of a reply, and with Tartarus followed him down into a subterranean complex. It took some time, and the further they descended, the greater the oppressive feeling of Torok's blight became. At last, they arrived in a large and open chamber where a handful of other priests and undead servitors scurried about. Gorshade, Tartarus, and the priest paused at a largely unoccupied space within the library to observe its goings-on. I am going to have to speak with Divinitus about you, am I not? A soft hiss issued from an unspecific location. My lord, the priest started. I have business to attend to, and delays to my work achieve nothing for me and the Dragonfather. The hiss was like a whisper, but abnormally loud to the point of almost deafening. My lord, if I may. Be gone, before I decide that your service will be transferred to something less prestigious. The priest needed no further encouragement and made himself scarce. Gorshade still could not quite tell where the voice came from, and while he looked about, the silence broken by a single syllable in Teclar from the Lich Lord. At that, everyone within the library made to leave including the Bane Lord. Not you, Tartarus. You may stay. I wish to exchange pleasantries with you after so long. Another silence descended on Tenebris's library, and Gorshade watched as the spectral Lich Lord willed himself into an incorporeal form. Similar to his peers among the Dragonfather's chosen ministers, the more academically inclined Lich Lord was tall and exuded necromantic and arcane strength, if in a more muted sense. Though, in contrast to Terminus and Venethrax, Tenebris chose a somewhat lithe form for himself, a tattered robe and hooded skeletal figure that hid what would normally be a skull. Only the glow of an eye betrayed anything that might be construed for a head. But, if only to try irking Gorshade, Tenebris glided through him to reach the shelf behind and started flipping through the pages of a book, which he handed to the Eldritch. Thank you, my lord, he bowed. May I know why you have requested my presence? Tartarus, how does your form treat you? It treats me well, my lord. Good, good. No signs of your hold on this dimension weakening at all? None that I can perceive, my lord. Excellent, excellent. Tenebris looked at Gorshade, who was still bowed. No need for the formality, lord of Iles. My power over the forces of the Empire of Grix is different from what some of the others wield. You are not for me to command even if I may not be stopped from doing so. Gorshade stood straight and looked at the Lich Lord a little bewildered. Follow me, Tenebris said simply, gesturing for the others to attend, and they did so. 
Gore shared, though growing anxious at the Lich Lord's lack of an answer for him, knew he was in no position to press for a response. Even though everyone knew Tenebris and his peer Fulminus, thanks to the scourge that ended Orgoth's resistance in Imoran 400 years before, were not as strong as their corporeal peers among the Lich Lords, it was still a good idea to remain in their good graces, especially for Gorshade, since he knew these two particular ministers of Torek were the foremost authorities in all of Imoran on matters pertaining to necromancy and the occult. Such lore as they held and knew, Gorshade ravenously sought. Corripio is such a petty individual sometimes. The silence, but for the footsteps of the Eldritch and the Bane, was broken with that strange quip. I do not understand, my lord. At that, Tenebris stopped at a particular set of shelves, and he gestured for Gorshade to have a look. Many of these tomes are from the Archive of Skell. I am aware that you have your own agenda among us, Lord Gearshield of Housefire. Gorshade unintentionally glared at the Lich Lord. And so long as it is in accord with what I seek, you may do as you please here. However, you are limited by being formally living, I suppose is the best way of saying it. I suppose I am too, but my need for physical sustenance is but a memory of a memory. Nevertheless, you are also advantaged by being of the recently living, and can bring a certain perspective that I cannot. Unlike some, I know what I lack, and a physical state is the least of those things and Caripio was just recently good enough to permit the transfer of some of his prized volumes to my personal libraries. I believe I understand, my lord, that you wish to cooperate on your research into the void. Tenebris clapped his incorporeal hands. Very good, very good. I do wish to combine the fruits of our studies in the hope that all of the souls out there. He waved his hand randomly before checking himself, turning a little and waving once again presumably towards mainland Imoran, whether it be human, dwarven, trolkin, elven, or what have you, that they may be unified in service to the Dragon Father, with as little pain or trouble as is necessary. Neither Tartarus nor Gorshade sensed it, but there was a certain anticipation in Tenebris's voice. But what of my agenda? the Eldritch asked carefully. It would be a pity should it be at odds with my work. But should you feel the need to abandon what you have done for us, I advise two things. Tenebris held out one translucent hand, palm up. Do leave me a copy of your findings. Scholars do well to share their work. And he raised his other hand. And be sure not to tell me of your impending departure. <laughs>